everybody. I was asked by Hippie Crafter to demo their stretched canvas and they sent me a, an acrylic paint set with 20 colors in it. So I thought today I would do a swatch of the paint colors so I have it and then have a little play on one of these canvases. They were very generous. This is a 10 pack of standard 9 by 12 stretch canvases. They are triple primed, pine wood frame, and 100% cotton, so nice quality. So I am going to, let's just open this because I haven't opened it yet. Oh, each canvas is individually wrapped, so that's nice. I don't have to worry so much about keeping them clean. Sometimes they are not individually wrapped, and that would tend to get a little dirty on the shelf. So I'm going to move the stack. And we'll open, oops, we'll open up this one. I got a hole right there. Looks like it's a little bit dented right there. But for what I am thinking about doing, that won't make any difference. Okay, so um, just before I get started, they carry a line of art supplies. They have the resin and hardener. They have the acrylic paints and the canvases. Different types of tape. They also have paint pouring products. So the website will be linked in the description below and I will have both of the both the canvas and the paint linked. Um, they have a website and they have an uh, Amazon shop. So I will link these two products that I'm going to use today to Amazon for you so that if you want to try them too, you can do so. Okay, so I'm going to set the canvas aside for just a minute and get ready to swatch these paints. Now I did open them earlier and took the protective plastic off from around the top because I just wanted that to be done. So when you open it up, um, there's a nice little thank you card in here. If our paints don't meet your expectations, email us for a full refund. So that's nice in their email address. And I'm going to take all of these out because I'm going to probably take them out anyway. So let me just do it kind of in order and I'll tell you what we have. Mars Black, Cold Gray, Raw Umber, Burnt Umber, Viridian, which is kind of a blue-green, Phthalo Blue, Ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, emerald green, pale green, which is kind of a bright green, orange yellow, scarlet, burnt sienna. You know what? I'm going to swip this. Swip it. I'm going to swip that. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, I guess that can go there. Um, rose, which is kind of a magenta, violet, titanium white, lemon yellow, mid yellow, it's kind of a Hansa yellow, kind of a bright yellow, yellow ochre, one of my favorites, and a color called champagne, which is kind of a nice skin tone. Okay, so there are all of the colors. So I'm going to get a piece of, maybe I'll just do it in my sketchbook. I think I'll do that because, or my art journal, because I use that most often. And so that'll be a good reference and it'll be right there when I need it. So I'm going to get that and get some water and some brushes and I'll be right back. Okay, I decided to do this in my small dilutions journal. And off camera, I just went ahead and made a grid and marked in the colors. What I think I want to do, and I think I'll have enough room, is I want to do full strength and then I want to also do a swatch mixed with the Satin Glazing Liquid by Golden 
Um, it just makes the colors a little more transparent, and I would like to see how that looks too. So, yeah, I should have shook all these up while I was off. They're really thick and creamy though, so I don't think they probably need a whole lot of shaking up. Old artwork's always good for something. <laughs> But you see the body? I mean, it's almost like a heavy body. It's definitely not thin like a craft paint is. It's got some body to it for sure. I already got paint on my fingers. I am just a messy painter. And I have to tell you, being 70, my teenage years were during the 60s. I was in high school and junior high school during the 60s. And the name Hippie Crafter just speaks to me. It just does. Okay, I have my paints all out. I'm going to start and go through and put down the full color solid color, unmixed, undiluted color first. It'll just be easier that way. The white, the lemon yellow, and you can see that one's a little transparent, which is good to know. This is why you should just take a few minutes and swatch your new paints. This is mid-yellow. Also a little transparent. Okay, um, thoughts. The paints are, they're very creamy. What I did notice that I wasn't crazy about is how fast they dried on my palette. By the time I got to the end, and this didn't take all that long, um, they were already starting to skim over. So I would recommend if you get these, they're, they're worth getting. I mean, it's a good value, and it's a nice paint. I like the way it goes down. I like the way it mixes with the um, glazing liquid. But I would recommend that you use a Stay Wet palette. Um, I'm just going to, I'm not sure. Where am I at here? If you can see, with the lighter colors, it's more difficult to see the difference with the paint mixed with the glazing medium, but with the mid-tones and darker ones, you can see that it's it's different. But I would recommend these. It's, it's a good buy, so I would recommend that. Link is in the show notes below. So I'm going to set this aside to dry, and I'm going to get the canvas, and I'll be back and show you what I think I'm going to try to do. Okay, I just want to show you what I'm doing here for a second. I went through my papers and pulled out... I looked first for semi-transparent papers and then just kind of filled in with whatever I grabbed out of my tray. So I have them laid down kind of where I think I'm going to use them. But in order to put a coat of gesso on my canvas, which probably isn't totally necessary because it says it's triple primed, but I just like to start with it anyway. But I'm going to take the papers off of the 
canvas and lay them in the same orientation here on in this cardboard tray. This is just a dog food tray. <laughs> they come in really handy. This is what always ends up being different for me is what goes on top of what because all right but that's close enough you get the idea it just makes it a little easier to kind of let do a dry lay put everything where you want it you can move things around and decide what you want and don't want but and then pray for no big wind don't have the fan on when you're doing that I almost just knocked that off the table behind me okay so I am going to go ahead and put one coat of gesso on here and then I will put everything down with matte medium and again we'll just come back okay I just put this one light coat of gesso on the canvas and I pulled out orange yellow champagne and burnt sienna I'm gonna put these paints to the test here because I'm gonna go for a uh, a um, like a distressed background so I'm going to apply them thick and thin here and there my brush is now completely filled with gesso let's get a new brush all right so I'm just gonna pick up some orange and it's just gonna be random I'll put it on thicker, even with some texture, maybe in some places. And then I'm going to just brush mix some of the burnt sienna in. I'm not going to wash my brush. I think that's good so I'm gonna set those paints aside I'm gonna clean off my palette actually I have some orange left I'm just gonna paint the sides of the canvas and then dry it and I'll be back okay this is dry with the heat tool I dried it now what I want to do is distress it and you might be able to see here I just tried it for a second because I said I'm not gonna go through all of this with you guys if it's not gonna work so what you want to do is just spray I'm going to do kind of half at a time because it'll start to dry. And I have a 3M sponge sanding pad. It's a medium grit. That's all I could come up with. You can use a kitchen scrubber, but you just want to scrub across. You don't want to wait too long after applying the paint to do this so that... Um, nothing comes back up and it is kind of messy as you can see you get a lot of sludge and if I was going to do a painting on top of this instead of and I'm just going to dip that in my water basin I did get clean water I don't know why because it's going to be really dirty again um, and then come back with a damp rag and take that sludge off and you can see right there I think you can see it where the paint was the heaviest it just took like that bump of paint off the texture off for this it's I just am tr doing this for the purpose of just seeing how much the canvas can take I did dip my sponge or my sandpaper sponge in the water too you want that to be wet as well you don't have to have a Sponge. You can just use regular sandpaper. I could do this after I put the collage paper on and take some of the paper off too, which is kind of an interesting look. But that's not really what I'm doing on this piece. This, the reason I'm doing this is just to see if the canvas can take it. If, I mean, any canvas is going to stretch if you, 
um, abuse it enough. If your canvas does get stretched out, this held up pretty well. If it does get stretched out, just spray the back with water and dry it, and that should, you know, tighten your canvas back up again. That's all I'm going to do. This held up pretty good. I'm going to just dry the wet, and then we'll get on with the actual project. I'll be back. Something that I wanted to mention, when you're drying canvas paper, anything, whether it's paint or water or sprays or whatever wet media you're using, hold your piece up so the heat can pass through it. it on a canvas, it will just dry a lot faster because the heat is going through and not getting trapped underneath. But even more important than with the canvas paper, and we all use tons of paper and we're using glue and matte medium and paint and whatever sprays, if you hold your paper up and dry it so the heat can pass through, your paper will curl a lot, lot less. The reason your paper curls, sorry, I'm not even using that. The reason your paper curls is because the heat is being trapped underneath and it's trying to escape out the sides of your paper, which is causing the paper to curl. So if you hold your paper up and dry it with your heat tool that way, it will curl way, way less. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start putting matte medium down with these papers. I have an old book that just fits under here like that so I can press down and not stretch my canvas. And I have my tray of paper here and I will just speed this up because you all know how to glue down paper and we will get on with it. So that's it for a minute or two. It'll be a couple hours for me, but for you, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Everything is pretty dry. I put some pieces of book pages on the edges. So I have a puddle of satin glazing liquid, about 50 cents worth, and uh, some burnt sienna of the Hippie Crafter paint, about a nickel's worth, um, size-wise. And I'm just going to brush mix this. I want it, I want more glazing medium than paint, because I want it quite transparent. And I'm just going to marry this all together, so that it has some cohesiveness and looks better. Now I'm going to dry this that's on the top, but first I'm going to take, I love using old dish cloths and dish towels because to do this because they have such great texture. It's not too much, but yet it's there. <clears throat> and I'm just going to remove some of that. It's drying pretty fast, even with the even with the glazing medium, which usually leaves your paints open longer. All right, since it's drying so fast, I'm gonna get the edges done. I thought I was gonna dry the top and then do the edges, but I guess I'm not. But there. Okay, so you guessed it. Time to let it dry some more. But you see how it just brings everything together so much better than if I'd have just left it and not put that coat of paint on the top. With the glazing medium, I like to use that rather than just watering down my paint to do something like this because 
I don't want to add a whole lot more wet on top of these papers. I don't want them to start lifting. So even though they were pretty dry, I think I could still start lifting some edges. So um, the glazing medium, I just like it better. Plus it doesn't, it makes the color more translucent, but it doesn't really make the paint a lot thinner, as if that makes sense. I like that about it too. So, okay, I'm going to clean up again and dry this again, and then I'll be back. Stay with me. Okay, time for another layer. I'm just making some rolled up papers, and I just cut strips, tore strips off of this big sheet of collage paper that I made. There's a video on my channel of how to do that if you want to make that. I will try to put an i-card up there for you. So what I did was I rolled, I rolled these pieces of paper around a pencil and I'm just adding a bit of glue on one edge. This is my favorite glue. So I'm just going to roll this around this pencil. I've already rolled it once just to get it to curl because this paper is several layers thick, so it's not the easiest to roll. But then with the pencil inside, I can press really hard on the glued edge against the pencil, and it keeps its round shape. I'm not sh pushing it flat. About it. So I'm going to somewhere on this piece put these rolled papers I think that's the plan anyway let's get it and see if there's some place to put them now I have other things that I know are going to go on here kind of in each corner and then one in the center okay so there's our papers and then I think I'm going to put this Oh, let's see where those all fit. Let's make sure all my pieces, parts are going to fit. I want to put that here. Okay. Okay. That works. Um, I'm going to put some color on this piece, and then I'm going to take some bubble wrap and just get some texture with some paint here and there. I think I'm probably just going to use black. Okay, I just have the burnt sienna and watered it down on my brush. And I'm just getting some of that color on this piece of corrugated cardboard because this is a pretty grungy piece and I'm really glad to be back in my grunge. I'm going to water this Mars black down and stamp with it. Okay, I glued these down with Liquitex matte super heavy gel and those seem to be stuck really well. I have a piece of paper down here because I'm going to splatter those with some black paint. If a little bit goes on the canvas that's okay. I just don't want a whole bunch. All right move this and I need to put my cardboard down and if that's wrong too late so now let me show you what my final layer is going to be all of these Tim Holtz paper dolls and I took archival ink in sepia and a blending tool and just 
hit each one with a little bit of the sepia color just so that they go better with my canvas. And I'll show you where they're going to go. This guy is going to stand on those papers. Maybe a little bit crooked. These guys are going to sit on these on this. I'll put some dimensional tape behind them so they don't tip over. And then I have this guy with a little coat check piece. Um, these pieces are from Urban Layers, Tim Holtz Urban Layers. And then this little bowler hat guy is going to sit up there. And these guys, I'm debating whether to put them, I kind of like them down lower. They hang off the canvas a little bit, but I guess that's all right. So I think, I think it's done. You like it? I like it. It was really fun. I got to thank, I'm going to thank Anthony again at the Hippie Crafter for sending me the box of acrylic paints. They're really nice. I think you should give them a try. Um, like I said, they are consistency wise like a tube acrylic that type of body, not like a craft paint at all. Um, nowhere near that thin. So and you can always thin it down. I like the way it, it made a glaze with the glazing medium. And the canvases are really nice. So thank you, Anthony. I'll have everything in the show notes down below in the description box. So thanks a lot for coming along with me today watching me do this demo with the Hippie Crafter. I think it needs a name. You guys give me some suggestions of names. I thought Old Men's Club. I don't know. But I need a name. So leave me a comment. Give me your best uh, suggestions for names for this piece. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. Hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified next time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.